Tiet Dharma Master Zheng Yan, CEO Yan, Dharma Master De Yuan, and all respected venerable, distinguished scholars, executive members of Tsuji Four Missions, and all Tsuji volunteers worldwide, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. We welcome you all to join this launch ceremony of the Ying Zheng Distinguished Lecture Series on Buddhism. This lecture series will describe the profound contribution of Dharma Master Zheng Yan and her mentor, Venerable Ying Sun, and aim to promote academic studies of contemporary Buddhism. Last year, when I mentioned to Professor Jun Huang Chen a lecture series on modern Buddhism based on the legacy of Dharma Master Zheng Yan and her mentor, Venerable Ying Sun. He replied at once. He said, yes, you should go for it. We then we invited the partner university to join this great academic event. We now have Peking University, Cambridge University, Columbia University, Harvard University, Oxford University, Princeton University, and University of British Columbia. At our first steering committee meeting, members of the Seven University and the Tsuji Foundation all agreed to use Ying Zheng as the name of our lecture series on Buddhism and concentrate on modern Buddhism. I reported to Dharma Master Zheng Yan and CEO Yan Bo Wen about this event and was grateful to receive their support. Sponsored by the Buddhist Tsuji Foundation and in partnership with the seven universities, we are now glad to announce the start of this lecture series. The Central Steering Committee of the Ying Zheng Distinguished Lecture Series agreed to organize one lecture each month. This pilot series will run from September 2021st to March 2022nd. It will begin at the Cambridge on the 20th of September, and the speaker is Professor Yu Jun Wang from Harvard University. He is the founder of the ChemLab Chinese Art and Media Laboratory from Harvard. The second lecture will be given in October at the Harvard University, and so on every month. The main purpose of this lecture series is to deepen the research and discussion of modern Buddhism. It's a philosophy, practices, model of governance worldwide, and its interplay with different professions and civilizations. We hope that this lecture series should next year provide a journal, symposium, and website to spread understanding and theoretical explanation of modern Buddhism. He also hoped to contribute to the academic field of Buddhism and enrich the development of Buddhism in our time. This is the dream and the long-term objective of Dharma Master Ying Sun and Dharma Master Zheng Yan. Let's start today's event by watching a short film that briefly introduce the affinity and idea of these two great Buddhist saint to guide the Buddhism and its application to the modern world. Let's look at the film. We're all connected by suffering. Twenty-five hundred years ago, Buddha came to the world, witnessed the afflictions of the mind, the inequality of the society. Buddha taught the Four Noble Truths. It began with suffering. More than two thousand years later, in a world torn apart by war, 
Jama Master Inshun had seen the rises and falls of times. The world was still filled with much suffering. Today, with extreme weather and climate emergency, we're witnessing a world with more natural disasters, resulting in much more suffering for all sentient beings. From Venerable Ananda's Thus I Have Heard, that answer was handed down from generation to generation, from sages of the past to us today. 2,500 years on, that answer is brought to life. That answer is Buddha Dharma. <laughs> The Venerable Dhamma Master In Shun dedicated his life studies to transform the ancient Buddha Dhamma to fit today's society. For Buddha Dhamma to be the cure to today's ailments, it must be practiced, it must be put into action. In a chance encounter six decades ago, Dhamma Master Chen Yan became the disciple of Dhamma Master In Shun. With a simple instruction to the young novice, now that you are a Buddhist monastic, remember always to work for Buddha's teachings for all sentient beings. With this as the guiding light, Dharma Master Chen Yan founded Zhiji Foundation more than 55 years ago, building the path for all to walk and practice. This path started with charity and later extended to medicine, education, and humanistic culture. And now, the footprints of Zhiji's four missions had extended to over 126 countries and territories, transcending the bounds of race, nationality, language, and religion. Most importantly, Buddha Dharma now exists as an actual path for all to walk and practice. We're all connected by suffering, as we are all connected by the Buddha Dharma. Let us look into the wisdom of the past and together find the collective solution of today and tomorrow. Thank you for this touching and inspiration video. I first watched this video this morning and I got tears in my eye. It's really touching. As a member of Tsuji, we always remember uh, Dharma Master Ying Sun and also the teaching of Dharma Master Zheng Yan. And thank you for Dai TV station to produce such wonderful programs. At the beginning of this ceremony, let me first introduce speaker who joined us here in this studio. And first, I'd like to introduce Dharma Master De Yuan from Jingsi Abode and CEO of uh, Cixi Foundation, Yan Bo Wen, and Dr. Ling Junlong, CEO of Buddhist Cixi Medicine Foundation, and Dharma Master De Cheng from Jingsi Abode. 
Dharma Master De Huang from Jingsi Abode. Professor Luo Wenrei, the President of Tsuji University of Science and Technology. Dr. Lin Xingrong, Superintendent of Hualien Tsuji Hospital. And Professor Xu Mu Zhu, Honorable Vice President of Tsuji University. And Mr. Xiong Shiming, Deputy CEO of Buddhist Tsuji Charity Foundation. And Mr. Scott Liu, Deputy CEO, Buddhist Tsuji Charity Foundation. And Professor Alice Ann DeVito, from English Language and Literature Tsuji University. And also Professor Lin Jiande, from Tsuji University. And Professor He Yunqi, from Tsuji University. Thank you for joining us. And let's let me continue to introduce 12 scholars from partner universities who joined us via Zoom. Professor Stephen Tizer from Princeton University is a director of program in East Asian Study. Professor Jonathan Gould from the Center for the Study of Religion at the Princeton University. Professor Yu Jun Wang, the founding director of the Camp Lab at the Harvard University. Professor Imura Galamos from the Faculty of Asian and Middle Eastern Study at the Cambridge University. Professor Noga Gadani from Asian and Middle Eastern Study at the University of Cambridge. Professor Ulrich Rosler from Oriental Institute, Oxford University. Professor Matthew Osborne from the Oriental Institute, Oxford University. Professor Bernard Four from the East Asian Language and Culture, Columbia University. Professor Zhao Hua Yang from Department of Religion, Columbia University. Professor Wang Song from the Center for Buddhist Study, Peking University. Professor Zhao Yu from the Department of Philosophy and Religious Study, Peking University and Professor Junhua Chen, the Fellow of Royal Society of Canada and from the Director of East Asian Religious Study, UBC. Thank you for joining us, for all these partner universities and all distinguished scholars. And for the opening remark of this ceremony, let's welcome Dharma Master Yuan from Jingsi Bo to deliver her remark. Welcome. Good day. Thank you to each one of you for joining us today. We are very pleased to welcome you to this lecture series on Buddhism. Before we start, I would like to express my sincere appreciation to all the distinguished speakers who have generously helped us make this event come together. It would not be possible to do this without you. Venerable Ing Sun promoted humanistic Buddhism. As his disciples, Dhamma Master Zheng Yan received Venerable Ing Sun's instruction of for Buddha's teachings for sentient beings and carry them out through practicing the Dharma in daily life and inspiring people to serve as living Bodhisattva. The Buddha remind us again and again in his teaching that the action of the heart, the Buddha, and sentient beings are the same. Since everyone has the Buddha nature, Everyone should awaken to their Buddha nature. But because living beings are ignorant and have afflictions, they need to engage in spiritual cultivation. The starting point of spiritual cultivation is walking the Bodhisattva path. After Dharma Master Cheng Yan was ordained, she has lived in a small wooden cabin 
Dhamma Master Cheng Yen would recite the Lotus Sutra, prostrating with every word of the Sutra to comprehend the accent of it, and carry out the spirit of the Sutra of innumerable meanings and the Lotus Sutra by putting compassion in action. We read sutras in order to learn its spirit. Dhamma Master Cheng Yen says, Sutra show us life's principles, which point us to the right path to walk on. Sutra and the Dharma provide us methods for spiritual cultivation. We need to learn the methods to apply them in life. Sutra do not change with time. Though times change, the principles taught by the Buddha can be applied to the past, present, and beyond. For a long time, the Dharma was limited to the monastic community. However, Dharma Master Cheng Yen hopes that the Dharma can be extended beyond the temples and into people's hearts. Therefore, she established Buddhist Chuchi Foundation and guided her disciples to put the Dharma into action. She promoted the concept of living out the Dharma in daily life and inspired people to serve as living bodhisattvas. Chuchi volunteers do not often hold Dharma services nor emphasize on rituals, but they harbor the Dharma in their hearts and carry it out in their daily life. Dharma Master Cheng Yen says that she felt very courageous for establishing Shiji and moreover, fostering interfaith cooperation to build harmony. If mutual respect and cooperation could be fostered among the various religious groups to relieve the suffering of people and sentient beings, these will be the most beautiful things in the world. So, as we explore the Dharma through this series, let us remember that the Sutra show us life's principles, which point us to the right path to walk on. And what we need to do is to make progress on the path and never stop. The body path is broad, straight, and easy to walk on. If we set our direction, focus on spiritual cultivation with a pure heart, and walk diligently, we are doing the right thing. May everyone be well and safe. May there be no disaster in the world. So, a very warm welcome to each one of you. I give my best wishes for a successful event. Thank you. Thank you, Dharma Master De Yuan, for your wonderful remark. And the next speaker, I would like to invite Mr. Yan Bo Wen, the CEO of Buddhist Charity Tsuji Foundation. Let's welcome. Dear Dharma Master Chen Yen, Master De Yuan of the Jin Si Abode, Professor Chen Jinghua from University of British Columbia, and Dr. Ray He, Deputy CEO of the Tsuji Foundation, who are the initiators of this lecture series, and online representatives from Princeton University, Harvard University, Cambridge University, Oxford University, Columbia University, and Peking University. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. I'm honored to welcome all distinguished representatives from the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada, China, and Taiwan. As Dharma Master De Yuan mentioned, 
Venerable In Sun promoted humanistic Buddhism and throughout his life advocating people-oriented Buddhism. And for this, Venerable In Sun was awarded a doctorate from Taisho University in Japan by his publication of A History of Zen Buddhism in China, becoming the first Taiwanese Buddhist monastic to receive a doctorate degree. From Venerable Yin Sun, Dharma Master Zen Yen received the instruction of six words. For Buddha's teachings, for sentient beings, putting the six words in action. In 1966, Dharma Master Zen Yen founded the Buddhist Tsuji Merit Association, personally engaging in charitable works and carry out the organization's four missions of charity, medicine, education, and humanistic culture, as well as international disaster relief, bone marrow donation, community volunteerism, and environmental protection, which together form the foundation's eight footprints. Today, Tsuji Foundation has provided relief in 126 countries and regions around the world, and has Tsuji volunteers branches in 66 countries and regions. Over the past 20 months, as the COVID-19 pandemic spread globally, many countries and regions entered lockdown, making logistics of release material extremely challenging. However, Tsuji Foundation was able to draw on the love and strength of our volunteers around the world, devoting themselves to pandemic prevention and relief efforts. As of July 2021, more than 38 million epidemic prevention materials, including personal protective equipment and medical equipment, have been provided in 93 countries and regions. And relief assistance programs in 41 countries and regions, benefiting over 9 million people. Of particular concern this year was India and neighboring Nepal. Seeing the homeland of Buddha devastated by COVID-19 greatly affected the Dharma Master Zen Yen. Considering the vast area and diverse languages of the two countries. Tsuji Foundation quickly collaborated with over 40 local organizations, including the communions, the missionaries of charity, Upe Foundation, Oxfam, Pampal, Monasteries, and Geo Foundation. Through charitable and interface collaboration with Buddhist, Catholic, Muslim, and other religious groups, the foundation was able to provide epidemic prevention materials and assistance to not only India and Nepal, but also neighboring countries of Bhutan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Laos, and Cambodia. Today, nearly 10 million epidemic prevention materials and full relief assistance have been provided to 229 organizations, and these efforts will continue into the future. Over the past 50 years, Tsuji volunteers around the world take the heart of the Buddha 
are their own heart, and the mission of their teacher are their own, and practice the compassionate spirit of the great vehicle through the Ciji school of Buddhism. We bear in mind Dharma Master Zen Yen's teachings. Earth shattering disasters should bring about world awakening realizations. This pandemic providing an important lesson. The best remedy to mitigate the pandemic is for everyone to be vigilant and relevant and observe a plant based diet. Only by purifying people's hearts with Dharma can our society be in harmony and the world be free from disaster and suffering. Once again, I wish to express my gratitude and welcome the professors of seven world-renowned universities who are contributing their research and publications to this lecture series. With utmost sincerity and reverence, let's open the Insun Distinguished Lecture Series on Buddhism. Thank you. Thank you so much, for Mr. Yan Bo Wen. Uh, actually, he's now uh, busy in dealing with the vaccine imported to Taiwan. We hope that uh, embracing for the pandemic worldwide can be easened. So the next section, I'm honored to introduce many our good friends. They are Buddhist scholars, Dharma masters, and distinguished guests to join this special event. Let me introduce, they are Dharma master Shi Zhao Hui, professor from Department of Religion and Culture, Shenzhong University. She's also laureate of the 38th Niwano Peace Prize from Japan. Dharma Master Jing Yao, Chairman of China Buddhist Association. Dharma Master Guo Dong, the former abode president of Dharma Drum Mountain. Dharma Master Guo Hui, abode president of Dharma Drum Mountain and the Dharma Master Ming Yu, former chairman of Chinese Young Buddhist Association. Dharma Master Miao Xi, the president of Maritime Newspaper from Buddha Lai Fo Guangshan, and the Dharma Master Chang Chun, the CEO of Lingzhou Mountain Buddhist Society, and Dharma Master Xian Yue, the steering director University for Life and Peace Preparatory Office, and Professor Richard Madison from UC San Diego, and Professor Father Gregory Shakay from Boston College, Nepal Center, Professor John Hobmile from Regent Park College, Oxford University, Professor Stephanie Trovgani from London University, and Dharma Master Zheng Guan from Stanford Medicine School and Mr. Chen Yue Guang, Executive Director and Secretary General of Dunhuang Foundation, and Dharma Master Sheng Kai, Professor and Vice Head of Department of Philosophy, Tsinghua University, Professor Zhang Feng Lei from China Renmin University, Professor Wei De Dong from China Renmin University, Professor He Jianming from China Renmin University, and Professor Shen Fang, also from China Renmin University, Professor Gong Jun from Sun Yat-sen University, Professor Deng Wei Ren from Dharma Zhuang Institute of Liberal Art, and Professor Wang Zheng Yao from Beijing Normal University, Professor Liu Tingjie from Beijing University of Post and Telecommunications, Professor Zhong Yang from Peking University, Professor Tang Hui from Central Academy of Fine Arts, and Mrs. Guo Meiling, Chairman of Century Gallery Group, and Mr. Yao Ting, the President 
of China Digital Library, and Professor Lin Chongmin, the president of Nanhua University, and Professor Yan Yun from Taipei Medical University. He is also a member of board directors of Chiji Foundation. Professor Feng Yan from National Taiwan University. He is also a member of board director for Chiji Foundation. Professor Zhang Weiling, he is a former president of National Central University and former education minister. Professor Zhang Mingxiu from National Zhengzhi University. Professor Li Yuzhen from National Zhengzhi University. Professor Helen Liu from National Taiwan University. Professor Huang Yunxi from Shenzhen University. Professor Ho Kunhong from Shenzhen University, and Professor Yu Xiangzhou, a World Fellowship of Buddhist, and Dr. Christy Zhang, the former president of International Association of Buddhist Women, and Mr. Jeffrey Luo, CEO of Vision Project, United Daily News Group, and Mr. Wang Chuozhong, the president of China Times, and Ms. Doris Chen, the general manager of Linking Publishing Company, Mr. Tu Feng En, editor in chief, Linking Publishing Company, and let's continue to introduce the member of Chiji Foundation, Mr. Wang Duanzheng, the CEO of Chiji Cultural and Communication Foundation, and Ms. Lin Bi Yu, pure petitioners of the Jing Shi abode, and Mr. Eric Yao, the CEO of Chiji Cultural and Communication Foundation, and Ms. Huang Lixing, Secretary General, Chiji Dharma and Mission Main Council, and Dr. Zhao Youcheng, the Superintendent of Taipei Chiji Hospital. Dr. Jian Shouxing, Superintendent of Taichung Chiji Hospital, and Dr. Lai Ningsheng, Superintendent of Daoling Chiji Hospital, and Professor Liu Yujin, the President of Chiji University, and Professor He Yujin, Chief Secretary, Chiji University of Science and Technology, Professor Cai Zhonghong from Chiji University of Science and Technology. Professor Cheng Huang Ye from Chiji University of Science and Technology. And these are all volunteers. Mr. Wei Yin Chong, the founder of Ding Xing He De Cultural and Education Foundation. Ms. Liu Su Mei, CEO of Chiji Foundation in Indonesia. And Mr. Guo Zaiyuan, CEO of Chiji Medical Foundation in Indonesia, Mr. Frankie Huang, CEO of Chiji Education Foundation in Indonesia, and Mr. Chen Ai Shi, CEO of Dai TV Station in Indonesia, and Ms. Jian Shu Xia, CEO of Branch in Kuala Lumpur, Chiji Foundation in Malaysia, and Mr. Guo Jiyuan, CEO of Pingnan Branch, Chiji Foundation in Malaysia. And Chairman Lin Wei Cai and his beloved wife Dong Xiu Mei, the Chairman or Founder of Top Graph Corporation from Malaysia, and Mr. Henry Young, the CEO of Chiji Foundation in Philippines, and Ms. Day Bra, Deputy CEO of Chiji Foundation in the state, and Mr. Freeman Su, CEO of New Branch Chiji Foundation in the state. And Gary Ho, the former chief CEO of Chiji Foundation in Canada. And Mr. Hu Guangzhong, CEO of Chiji Foundation in Turkey. Thank you all to join us. We are very pleased that this is a family reunion, and this continue as a co initiator of this lecture series. I would like to also present a remark on this special event. This ancient distinguished lecture series on Buddhism aimed to describe the outstanding contribution 
of the Venerable Zheng Yan and her mentor, the Venerable Ying Sun, to the philosophy and practice of Buddhism in modern world. The modern tea Buddhism has been a big topic for Buddhist practitioners and scholars. I think we may all believe that religion has to respond to the need of people and the present. As the Mineral Yin Sun told Dharma Master Zheng Yan before her ordination, for Buddhism and for sensual beings. Buddhism emphasized on compassion and altruism. This great legacy has lasted over 2,000 years and enriched human beings worldwide. Nonetheless, we are now in a war where conflict between races, nationalities, rich and poor, human and nature are intensifying. Every Buddhist leader is trying best to explore way how the wisdom and compassion of Buddhism can solve this conflict and bring peace and well-being to all sensual beings. The Yingzheng Lecture Series will explore and examine the ideal and model of modern Buddhist practice to achieve this paramount goal. 100 years ago, when China and many other Asian countries faced the existential challenge of the survival of their nations and faith. Buddhism had the less strength. Yet both the Venerable Tai Xu and the Venerable Ying Sun advocated and elaborated humanistic Buddhism, which applied the wisdom and compassion of Buddha to the secular world. It created the beginning a humanistic Buddhism, the Venerable Ying Sun drew up a comprehensive theory of humanistic Buddhism, and his disciple, Dharma Master Zheng Yan, had put those theory into practice and realized the original ideal of Buddhism. Since it started five decades ago, Shiji has brought its four missions, charity, medicine, education, and cultural humanity to over 126 countries and regions. It successfully accommodated different races and religions to work together to provide love to the needy, eradicate their suffering, and bring them wisdom. As the Sutra of Infinite Meaning proclaims, many of Tsuji recipients eventually become volunteers and give alms to their own communities thus creating a cycle of love and proving the ideal of equality. As Buddha said, there shall be no giver, no recipient, and no giving itself. This testifies to the ultimate purpose of equality of all sensual beings. The Tsuji School of Buddhism is one of many Buddhist organizations seeking to realize the ideal of Buddha in contemporary society. It aimed to create a realm of the secular world that can bear the purity of human mind, social harmony, and make the world free from disasters, as Dharma Master Zheng Yan wishes. Buddhism in our time has to believe that through compassionate altruism, Buddhists can reach the ultimate enlightenment. Some may say that it might be too late for philosophy to change the world. However, we hope that this lecture series should contribute to this goal from the academic perspective. And thank you all. Next section, I would like to introduce my partner, the co-initiators of this lecture series, Professor Jun Hua Chen. He is a fellow of the Royal Society of Canada and Director of East Asia Religious Study at the UBC. Let's welcome Professor Jin Hua Chen. Okay, thank you. Dear Venerable Zheng Yan, Dear Venerable De Yuan, Dear CEO Yan Bowen, Dear Professor Ray Ho, Dear Tsuji members all over the world, and distinguished colleagues both from Indian Partner University and other institutions. It gave me great pleasure to witness the launches of the 
in the Distinguished Lecture Series on Buddhism. I want to express my profound gratitude to Venerable Zheng Yan and the members of the Qi Foundation, particularly Professor Lei Ho for their forthright and generosity in supporting this unique and unprecedented collaborative project between the academic world and Buddhist community. More than 2,000 years ago, Buddha's community attains the realizations and reveal the truth to the world. But as Buddha's teachings spread, even though the core remain intact, its external form changes in accordance with the world. Now, facing the challenges of the 21st century, how could Buddhism Personal salvations and world salvations make up the two sacred pillars. One cannot do without the other. After Buddhism spread to China, and for almost a many years, Chinese Buddhists have upheld this dual cause. However, observing the medieval history, particularly it's the transitional period from Khan to the Song Dynasty, we could see that Buddhists were increasingly losing its willingness to engage in the world. Under the pressures from both secular regimes and Confucian thinkers, Chinese Buddhism relocated itself from the urban centers to the remote mountains and gave away its irreversibilist outlook to a self-contained system. During the Ming and Qing dynasty, Buddhism reputation declined further. During the ends of the Qing dynasty and the early Republican era, the situation took a different turn. Master Tai Xu and humanist Buddhism, Nen Jian Huo Jiao, that he represented, brought Chinese Buddhism onto the international stage. This experience was then inherited by Master Yin Shen and Master Zhen Yan in our own day. The Cixi Foundations and its volunteers follow this footsteps and are always among the first to arise at the disaster zone. Their actions and the silent but perfect embodiments of the Buddhist humanist concern. In this sense, Cixi Foundations represents a return to the earlier forms of Buddhism and now is those ways forward for Buddhism tomorrow. Buddhism is cosmopolitan in its nature. It originates in Central India, but quickly spread across Central Asia and all the way to China and further to the entire Chinese cultural sphere. In the late modern period, the Europeans, uh, the Europeans colonial force expanded. Buddhism enters the horizons of the Westerners and thereafter spread in Europe, North America, and around the world. We could say that the international outlook and ambitions is encoded in the genes of Buddhism. After a millennial's non self isolation and following the Opium War in 1840, Chinese Buddhism started to reopen its horizon and some Chinese missionary turn the space toward the world, such as Master Tai Xu. He not only brought Buddhism far afield, but also intend to create several institutions in China that promote the teachings of Japanese, Tibetan, and Bali languages. His global vision was later inherited by masters who came after him, as well as by the Tsuji Foundation. The Tsuji Foundation not only has branches reaching all around the world, but also joins in a range of calls, including charities, medical care, disaster relief, education, environmental protections. These global characters of the Tsuji Foundation is a return to the earliest Buddhist tradition and is a direct inheritance of the spirits of Master Tai Xu. Buddhism 
seeing its origins in India, has been a religion that emphasized education. Before that destruction, the Nalanda University and the Vikram Sina University were among the most famous and resourceful institutions of our higher education. Similarly, in Chinese Buddhism, the monastic education was the main avenues for commoners to reach social classes and for the largest to circulate. Furthermore, as Buddhist elite interact with intellectual elite, Buddhism was able to keep refining its own theological and practical system. In a sense, we could say that a factor contributing to the prosperities of Buddhism is its collection with higher education. Today, the Tzu Foundation possesses its own complete education system and collaborates with the most prestigious university around the world. In this sense, the fact that we are being here together today reflect a shared spiritual inheritance from Master Tai Xu, Master Yin Shen, to Master Zheng Yin. Looking ahead, we should rediscover the Buddhist connections with the society, with the world, and with the academia. Thankfully, what we have come to accomplish today has not been features in the visionary blueprint drawn by the city foundations and Master Zheng Yin. Therefore, we should persist in our return to the original Buddhist explanation and continue deepening the collaborations between the Buddhist religions and, ac and academic world. Thank you all. Thank you, Professor Chen. Um, he uh, wrote us back the history of Buddhism from 2000 years until the recent century, from the Tai Shi, Master Tai Shi, Dharma Master Ying Sun, and then to Dharma Master Zheng Yan, to carry out the mission that applied the Buddha's wisdom to the secular world. Thank you, Professor Chen. The next section, I would like to invite the 12 representatives from seven partner universities. The first one, I would like to invite him to deliver his remark, Professor Stephen Tizer from Princeton University. Welcome. Hi,大家好,我是美国普林斯顿大学宗教学系的泰式文,我的研究领域是中国佛教史。I am Stephen F. Tizer of Princeton University. I specialize in the history of Chinese Buddhism. Jonathan C. Gold, I'm honored to represent Princeton together with my colleague, Jonathan C. Gold, who specializes in Buddhist philosophy in India and Tibet. 首先,我代表普林斯顿大学感谢赞助此次开幕仪式的佛教慈济基金会和他的创始人郑延上人,我们很感激得到协助圆满关于此善医疗和教育活动的机会。let me express Princeton University's deepest appreciation to the sponsors of this lecture series, the Buddhist Compassion Relief Tsuji Foundation and its founder, Dharma Master Zheng Yan. We are grateful for this rare opportunity to work together on projects of mutual interest in social welfare, medicine, and education. Chenzai Rangwaman Huanying Gold Jiaoshou Dabiao Pu Da for more details about Princeton's part of the program, I turn to my colleague, Professor Gold. Thank you, Professor Stephen Tizer. Uh, he's so kind as to speak a good Mandarin. So we feel very, very associated with each other. Thank you. And let's work on Professor Jonathan Gold, please. Thank you. Um, I join my colleague, uh, Buzzy Tizer in extending our deepest thanks to Tsuchi and the organizers of the Yinchang Distinguished Lecture Series. 
We at Princeton University are honored to be a part of this exciting and important collaboration. I'll say just a few words about our plans for the lecture at Princeton. Many scholars in the West today recognize that their fields of research have been limited and hampered by historic biases, especially those of race, ethnicity, gender, and nationality. More than ever before, scholars are looking for ways of understanding that had been previously sidelined or belittled. Consequently, philosophers who only recently would have ignored anything composed outside of Europe or North America are now quite willing to take Buddhist ideas seriously. A significant obstacle remains, however, which is the difficulty of translating Buddhist thought into a mode that is readily understood by contemporary scholars and students of philosophy in Western universities. Buddhist intellectual traditions, unfamiliar norms, structures, and idioms remain a barrier to their ideas being adopted as genuine conversation partners. This is true even when traditional texts have been rendered into English. The event we're planning for February of 2022 with the generous funding from Tsuchi Foundation will address the obstacles to translating Buddhist philosophy from Sanskrit for a modern Western philosophical audience. Our keynote speaker will be Professor Parimal Patil of Harvard University. In addition, we plan to invite at least one, perhaps two teams of translators for a day-long event preceding the lecture. The translators will discuss their recent translations of Buddhist philosophical works with panels of Western philosophers who will be asked to comment on what works well in the translations provided, uh, what presents barriers to taking the ideas seriously. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Gould. Thank you for your wonderful remark. And as a speaker, I'd like to invite Professor Yu Jun Wang. And he is the Abbey Etheridge Rockefeller Professor of Asian Art and the founding director of the Chem Lab at the Harvard University. As we welcome Professor Wang. Venerable Zheng Yan, Zheng Yan Fasu, and all the honorable guests. As the founding director of Harvard Chem Lab, I'm honored to be here to join our global partners in the inauguration of the Yingchen Distinguished Lecture Series on Buddhism. Under the current stewardship of Venerable Zheng Yan and in the spirit of her mentor, the Venerable Ying Shun, the Tsuji Foundation has made a difference in the world. It does so in part because of the broadly conceived humanistic Buddhism it espouses and its conviction of the relevance of Buddhism to the modern and contemporary world. As such, it captures the spirit of Buddhism in its most appealing part. Namely, that it is not a religion beholden to a single God, but a spiritual practice centered on each individual's path of discovery and awakening. We are in a world of great uncertainty. The great tension and distrust between groups and nations is tearing us apart. The ecological crisis is looming large. Technology is fast changing the way we live, behave, and think. Even the very notion of what it means to be human faces new challenges. The four missions of Tsuji, charity, medicine, education, and cultural humanity are precisely the areas that increasingly speak to our global needs. As educators, we share the same vision and mission. We also have a strong sense of urgency. Higher education in the 21st century faces new challenges. In this day and age of big data, open resources, and easy availability of knowledge, classroom teaching and university learning can no longer be conducted in the same way. 
it is with this sense of urgency that I founded the Harvard University CAM Lab. CAM stands for many things. Among them, cognition, aesthetics, and media and technology. We want to create humanistic technology or humanism with a technological edge. We want to speak to the young generations, the digital natives who may soon outstrip the print media, whether we like it or not. In any case, we want to be at the forefront of education, exploring ways of education that can still be relevant to the future generations. Many of Kamlat's projects share Ziji Foundation's vision of humanistic Buddhism. Harnessing digital technology, we stage Buddhist mindscape, showcasing how the meditative mind works and visualizes. We want to create experiences in ways that learners and practitioners of meditation in the world can experience what it's like to visualize the way classical Buddhism envisioned it to be. Like Tsuji, we hope we can bring our work to the world to be shared by the global audience. Clearly, we share the same bandwidth and wavelength with the Tsuji Foundation. The Yinchen Distinguished Lecture Series is our first collaborative effort. We hope our collaboration grows exponentially in breadth and depth in future. Today is the beginning. I look forward to working with you all to make the world a better place. Congratulations. Thank you, Professor Wang. And I, when I was at Harvard, uh, we have associate with each other. And he always say that every good had to be beauty. And beauty bring bliss. And bliss bring spiritual transcendence. I think we work together to bring people in good spirit and also beauty as well. Thank you, Professor Eugene Wang. And next, I would like to introduce also my good friend, uh, Professor Imura Galamos from Cambridge University. Welcome. Dear distinguished guests, uh, dear friends and colleagues, my name is Imre Galambos. I'm from the University of Cambridge. My field of research is uh, Dunhuang studies and the pre-modern manuscript traditions of China and Central Asia. It is a privilege to participate in this network, network of top universities who host lectures as part of the Yin Zhang Distinguished Lectures series on Buddhism. We are extremely grateful for the opportunity to collaborate with colleagues and friends from around the world in an effort to increase knowledge and awareness of various aspects of Buddhism, including the vision of humanistic Buddhism, and to discuss its relevance uh, for the society we live in. In this time of global crisis, collaboration is perhaps even more important than before. Amidst increasing physical isolation and tightly controlled borders, it is vital that we are not defined by current limitations, but continue to seek new opportunities to work, learn, and develop together. The Yin Zhang Distinguished Lecture Series on Buddhism is a wonderful program which enables leading authorities on Buddhism to deliver lectures on their ongoing research and emphasize the significance of that research in the modern world. The network has a global scale involving major universities on three continents. We very much hope that we will soon have a chance to welcome our partners and especially the distinguished professors delivering the lectures in person. Until then, we're prepared to do this digitally. We are extremely grateful uh, to the Tsuji Foundation for their generous financial support uh, for this lecture series. Needless to say, 
none of this would be possible without their help. And special thanks also to uh, He Risheng and Professor Chen Jinghua for initiating uh, this lecture series, for handling the logistics of the whole project, and in general, making it happen. We would also like to thank the staff of, at UBC, specifically Vicky Baker and Carol Lee, for tirelessly running much of the day-to-day -day organizational work. Their contribution is an essential part of organizing something on this scale. We very much hope that the distinguished lecture series will be a success and it will build the foundation for further collaboration on a whole range of new projects. We live in an increasingly global world and without doubt, the way forward is to engage in network type collaborative projects stretching beyond political and geographical borders. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Imura, for your vision and kindness. And uh, everybody may not know, but his uh, Mandarin is better than I do, without any accents. Thank you, Professor Galamos. And next one, I would like to invite uh, Professor Noga Ganoni from University of Cambridge. Let's welcome. Thank you very much. Um, dear distinguished participants, uh, I am Noga Ganani. I am a historian of pre-modern China, working primarily on Chinese religions, culture, and literature. On behalf of our department and university, I would like to express our profound thanks and appreciation for this wonderful opportunity to participate in this extraordinary new endeavor. Thanks to the great generosity of the Zheji Foundation, the Yincheng Distinguished Lecture Series on Buddhism will offer a new global platform for a lively and productive engagement with Buddhism. This series, we hope, will provide a fertile ground for scholarly explorations, will open new avenues for research and education in Buddhism, and foster engagement with the public across the world. We are committed to helping this collaboration succeed and form a solid foundation for the journal and other future endeavors dedicated to Buddhism. We're extremely honored and delighted to host the first lecture in the inaugural stage of the series in three weeks time. We are very excited to virtually host Professor Eugene Wang uh, in three weeks time in September 22nd. Professor Wang's lecture will be on Buddhist art for the 21st century. What might it look like? We are very much looking forward to the lecture and thank Professor Wong for joining us virtually, as well as to Icy and Lorna for their dedication and hard work in preparing and advertising the event. I would like to take this opportunity to also express our profound gratitude to the Jersey Foundation and its generous donors who made this promising new collaboration possible. On behalf of our colleagues, students, and the Cambridge community, please accept our most sincere thanks and good wishes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Noga Ganoni. Thank you so much. And next speaker, I would like to invite Professor Ulrich Losler from Oxford University. Welcome. Dear esteemed participants, my name is Ulrike Rösler and I'm taking part in this launch event as the current chair of the Faculty of Oriental Studies at the University of Oxford. It's a privilege and a pleasure to represent our faculty on this happy occasion. And I would like to express our gratitude that Oxford has the opportunity to be one of the universities hosting the Yincheng Distinguished Lecture Series in Buddhism. We are thrilled to take part in this major international initiative to promote knowledge about Buddhism and its contribution to contemporary society. And we will do our very best to make the lectures a success. The University of Oxford has a long-standing tradition in Buddhist studies, and there is great interest from various groups in previous decades, under the academic leadership of Professor Richard Gombridge, 
there tended to be a focus on Theravada Buddhism, but over the past 15 years or so, the interest has shifted more towards the Mahayana and its transmission and practice in Asia. Undergraduate students at Oxford can study some of the major languages of Buddhism, such as Sanskrit, Pali, classical Chinese, and Tibetan. And they are thus able to engage with Buddhist thought directly through the original testimonies in these languages. They also attend lectures and write essays on various aspects of Buddhism. And the late professor Stefano Zacchetti also established a master's program in Buddhist studies at Oxford, which has been running successfully for a number of years now and is at present in the capable hands of my colleague Matthew Osborne. He is also supervising a group of doctoral students carrying out research on various aspects of Buddhism. Guest lectures on Buddhism receive much attention from within the university as well as the public. Guest speakers can expect an audience of students and colleagues in Buddhist studies, Indian studies, Chinese studies, Tibetan studies, religious studies, and philosophy. Moreover, the Oxford Center for Buddhist Studies brings in members of the public who can also attend. Therefore, we tend to have a large and varied audience with a lively interest in the Buddhist traditions and in the relevance of Buddhist thought and practice for our modern society. I am therefore confident that the Yincheng Distinguished Lecture Series will find an enthusiastic welcome in Oxford. And I can promise that we in the Faculty of Oriental Studies will do our very best to support this initiative now and in the future. We look very much forward to collaborating with our distinguished colleagues at universities around the world in making these lectures a success. I would like to express my profound thanks to the Tsuchi Foundation for their initiative and vision in establishing this lecture series, which will honor and promote the intentions of the Venerable Chen Yen and the Venerable Yin Chun. I would also like to thank the team at UBC who have been so skillful and kind in bringing us together and organizing this event and the series itself. I look very much forward to the lectures and I wish the lecture series the best of success for many years to come. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Uri Rosler. I think with your participation, we will make this lecture series success. Thank you so much. And I'm so honored to invite Professor Matthew Osborne from Oxford University. Welcome. Thank you. Dear Dharma Master Zheng Yen, Venerable De Yuan, and the members of the Sangha, uh, Siji Foundation CEO Yen Bo Wen, Professor Chen, and Dr. He, distinguished scholars and colleagues from participating universities, and all participants of the In Zheng Distinguished Lecture Series on Buddhism launch. My name is Matthew Osborne, and today I represent Buddhist Studies at the Faculty of Oriental Studies at Oxford University, United Kingdom. On behalf of Oxford, I would like to express my gratitude to Dharma Master Zheng Yen and Tsi Ji for their support of Buddhist Studies internationally. At Oriental Studies at Oxford, we have a dedicated MPhil program in Buddhist Studies and there are also DPhil students writing their dissertations and various topics, as well as undergraduates taking papers, all with a focus on, but not limited to, Buddhist, Chinese, and Sanskrit language courses and classical texts. The Injun Distinguished Lecture Series, with its focus on Buddhism and contemporary society, will therefore be a great opportunity to develop the relationship between scholarship on Buddhist ethics, society, and culture, and the lives of practicing Buddhists worldwide. It will also support graduate students in their studies 
enabling them to give full attention to their work as they immerse themselves in those studies. The Oxford round of the Injung Distinguished Lecture Series in Buddhism will feature Dr. Anne Glegg of the University of Central Florida and Dr. Joy Brennan of Kenyon College in Ohio, who will lecture on whiteness is a sankara. Um, Buddhist practice and philosophy offer a rich framework for and imperative to do such work. Methodologically speaking, combining ethnographic and philosophical approaches, this paper aims to show both what contemporary Buddhists have done to alleviate the suffering caused by whiteness and what resources the tradition offers for extending such work. Drs. Glaig and Brennan will reflect on the responsibility of Buddhist scholars in Buddhist racial justice work. And we look forward to everyone's participation in this lecture on January 24th, 2022. Finally, thank you once again, Dharma Master Zungian and the Tsuji community for making this wonderful opportunity possible. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Matthew Osborne, for your wonderful remark. And thank you for joining us this uh, lecture series. And I'm honored to invite next speaker, Professor Bernard Fu. He is so respected scholar in the Buddhist study from Columbia University. Let's welcome Professor Bernard Fu. Thank you, Ray. Venerable Master Dayan, other Buddhist venerables, Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Yambo, and co-initiators, Dr. R and Dr. Chen and colleagues of our partner universities. It is a great honor and privilege for Columbia University to participate in the Yin Chang Distinguished Lecture Series on Buddhism, with an emphasis on Buddhism and modern societies. As you, we all know, our donor, the Buddhist Compassion Relief Tsuji Foundation, shows a great example of how Buddhism can respond to urgent crises facing humanities today. I believe this lecture series, along with the bilingual Ying Zheng Journal for Buddhism and Modern Society that results from it, will greatly contribute to Buddhist studies around the world. Speaking of my own work on Buddhism and modernity, I have two forthcoming books that deal with East Asian and Western accounts of the life of Buddha and with Buddhist and neuroscientific approaches to the mind. It's also truly inspirational to learn that the largest Buddhist organization in Taiwan was founded by Venerable Master Zheng Yen, a female monastic who is known in the West as Mother Teresa of Asia. As my colleagues know, I have always been interested in the contributions that women have made to Buddhism. Years ago, I published a book called The Power of Denial, Buddhism, Purity and Gender, which deal extensively with Buddhist nuns and lay women. In my recent work, a four volume series on medieval Japanese Buddhism, I continue to emphasize the role played by female deities. Because our strong emphasis on Buddhism and gender at Columbia, our first lecture will be on the Buddha's disciple Ananda, who has a great impact on the creation of the Buddhist nun order, to be delivered by Donald Lopez from the University of Michigan. And I will be happy to be his discussant. Finally, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to Venerable Master Zheng Yen, our donors from the Tsuji Foundation, co-initiators Dr. Har and Dr. Chen, and our partner universities for helping initiate this lecture series. I would also like to thank Vicky and Carol at the University of British Columbia for their support. May the Yingcheng Distinguished Lecture Series achieve great success. 
And I now turn to my colleague, Yang Jawa, for further details on our Columbia program. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Four. I think um, upon your guidance and join, I think we could make the lecture series a great success. Thank you, Professor Four. And next speaker, I'm honored to invite Professor Yang Zhao Hua from Department of Religion, Columbia University. Welcome. Thank you, Dr. Dear Venerable Master Zheng Yuan, uh, Venerable Master Du Yuan, and all other Buddhist Venerables present, Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Yan, Sinji Senior Volunteers, Co-initiators, Dr. He and Dr. Chen, colleagues of our partner universities, and other honorable guests. My name is Yang Zhao Hua. As a scholar of Chinese Buddhism from Columbia University, I feel honored to have the opportunity to participate in the Yin Zheng Distinguished Lecture Series on Buddhism. Venerable Master Yin Shun is a well-known Marx scholar whose theory on humanistic Buddhism has great impact on the development of Chinese Buddhism. Early generations of North American scholars might have heard of the Rocky Foundation Fellowship in honor of Venerable Master Yin Shun, which used to fund graduate students in North American Buddhist studies programs. I'm delighted to see that a spirit of Venerable Master Yin Shun will be carried on by the Yin Zheng lecture series and benefit Buddhist studies around the world. For more than half a century, Venerable Master Zheng Yan has been a pioneer of her time in that she's the founder of a Buddhist school that focuses primarily on charity work. As we all know, the origin of Ci Ji was attributed to the incident in 1966 when Venerable Master saw an indigenous Taiwanese woman's miscarriage without enough deposit in a local hospital. The Ci Ji origin story inspired one of our PhD students to write an excellent dissertation on childbirth in Chinese Buddhism. Professors. Kaiser Four and I were lucky to be on her committee. My own recent work also studies a Buddhist god who specializes in helping women to achieve a smooth delivery. Besides Professor Four's extensive works on the female in Buddhism, my predecessor of Chinese Buddhism, Professor Emerita Junfang Yu, wrote one book on Guanyin and the other on Taiwanese nouns. So there has been a well-established tradition at Columbia to study women and their role in Buddhism. In Columbia, we hold the last lecture next March on Anander, who helped create the first Buddhist nun order. Finally, I wish to thank sincerely Venerable Master Zheng Yan, our donors from the Ci Foundation, for their generosity. To Dr. He and Dr. Chen and our partner universities for helping initiate this lecture series. My gratitude also goes to Vicky and Carol at UUC for their support. At Columbia, I'd like to thank our PhD students, Alex Sogo and Xiao Xiao, to serve as the rapporteur. I very much hope that the Indian Distinguished Lecture Series on Buddhism will be successful. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Yang Zhao Hua. It's very happy to continue to work together. And thank you for your gardening when I was in Columbia University. Thank you. And next speaker, I'm honored to invite Professor Wang Song, Director of Center for Buddhist Study, Peking University. Welcome. Honorable masters, dear professors and colleagues, we are gathered here today to celebrate the launching of our lecture series. On behalf of the Buddhist Research Center at Peking University, I'm also pleased to say that we are honored to be one of the hosting institutes. The Chinese mainland Buddhist studies are booming. Peking University, the oldest and the most representative state university in China, is willing to communicate with academic colleagues from all over the world through the program of Yin Zheng Distinguished Lecture Series on Buddhism. As an interdisciplinary platform, we have professional scholars from religion, philosophy, language, history, archaeology, and art related 
to Buddhist studies. In terms of generation, our team includes both senior and young scholars. My young colleague, Professor Zhao Yu, will say hello to you soon. The speeches will focus on topics such as Buddhism and its devotion to contemporary society. We hope that these lectures will attract both professional researchers and ordinary listeners interested in Buddhism. We will do our best to make them success. I would like to sincerely express my gratitude to Buddhist Siji Charity Foundation, to Professor He Risheng and Professor Chen Jinghua, who initiated this wonderful lecture series, and to staff of UBC who organized this event. My appreciation also goes to all collaborative partners in devoting to this goal altogether. Thank you all, and may the Yin Zheng Distinguished Lecture Series on Buddhism will have great success for the years to come. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Wang Song, and the Peking University is one of the leading institutes to guide in the Buddhist study. Thank you. And the next speaker, I'm honored to invite Professor Zhao Yu from Department of Philosophy and Religious Study, Peking University. Welcome. Good evening, dear venerable master, professors and colleagues. I'm very happy and feel honored, uh, especially as a junior to most of you, uh, to join this brief but very meaningful launching conference. I still have a vivid impression of my studenthood, where lecture series or summer schools of the same kind played such a special role and benefited me in so many ways. For example, in 2013, um, we were able to participate in Professor Kisnik and Professor Karashima's lectures in the Buddhist College in Hangzhou, China, thanks to Professor Chen Jinghua. Um, they really opened my mind, introduced me to great traditions of scholarship, and not less importantly, gave me this sense of an international academic community that has been engaged with and empathetic uh, with the Buddhism in practice. Though I myself mainly work on texts of a long past, yet due to such early experiences, I have always kept in mind the real Buddhist practitioners of past, present, and future, and the changing world around them. Um, it makes sense of many things. I've been extremely grateful for that. And that's one of the reasons why I am excited and happy to see this common engine distinguished lecture series. Um, even to be a small part of it. Another less formal um, reason is that during this special time, um, it brings people of various paths and colleagues from different continents together, albeit online. So I'm very much looking forward to the coming lectures. Thank you very much and congratulations. Thank you, uh, Professor Zhao Yu for your wonderful remark, and we are looking forward to work together on this lecture series. Thank you so much. And as our ceremony comes to the end, I would like to honor to introduce Dr. Ling Junlong on behalf of Tsuji Foundation and Dharma Method Zheng Yan to deliver his gratitude remark. Let's welcome Dr. Ling Junlong, CEO of Tsuji Medicine Foundation. Thank you all distinguished guests and participants. I'm so honored to be able to participate in this wonderful event. I'm neither a scholar of Buddhism nor a Dharma master. I'm a practicing cardiologist. I'm still seeing patients on a daily basis I got to know Tsuji Foundation some 30 years ago. I was practicing in Los Angeles, California, seeing all my heart patients. 
And uh, I my married, established my wonderful business. Soon I realized I need to know the truth. What is a real uh, truth about life? It's awful. So I started looking for, even though I was uh, in a Catholic hospital, I was attracted to Buddhism. But I always have a question. Buddhism is such a wonderful religion. But how come what I saw some 30 years ago was St. Joseph's, St. Young's Hospital, Presbyterian Methodist Hospital, all Catholic or Christian hospitals. I've never seen one Buddhist hospital. I was curious. Buddhism is such a wonderful religion or philosophy, so to speak. But I've never seen a Buddhist hospital in my life until, by chance, I came back to Taiwan. I was born in Taiwan. And I went to Farin. Suddenly, it provided me with the answer. Yes, there is a Buddhist hospital in Hualien. Buddhism used to be practicing uh, for self-realization and so forth. Never devoted into helping others. However, we learn the truth and Master Chen Yen has carried out for Buddhism, for all sentient beings, from charity to medicine to education and to culture, all major four missions. And this is all it's about. And I have since joined the organization. We have now devoted to uh, medical care in Taiwan. We have seven hospitals around the island of Taiwan. We provide patient-centered medical care. Not anything else is still out of the love for human beings and for planet Earth. That's why we are very particular about conservations. So uh, I, we are here and we'll try to practice this, what we call humanistic Buddhism. Uh, I like to call it a, a practical uh, Buddhism. My friend used to tell me, you put up or you shut up. It's easier said than done as you uh, are well off. In Tsuji, everything we do, we can put up to show you in all for uh, missions. We can all put up to show you. And that's why it attracted so many people in our organization. We have now across so many countries. And during this period of pandemic, this Buddhism in action really helped a lot. And we are very proud of being a part of it. And today, I listened to all these distinguished professors and uh, Dharma masters, and uh, I believe this kickoff of this uh, wonderful uh, lecture series will have a tremendous impact on the study of Buddhism, and not only that, but also on the daily lives of the public for years to come. So I thank you for your participation and looking forward to your lecture series. Ganen. Thank you, uh, Dr. Ling Jinlong. Uh, we, you can tell that we always have a pleasure to associate with him. Put up or shut up, you know, but a scholar always open up. We speak out and you put up. <laughs> that's, the, that's the theory uh, and what, what we can do for this. And as we move to the closing remark, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to Professor Jinghua Chen 
for helping to initiate this lecture series. My appreciation mainly goes to all our partners who have worked to achieve this goal all together, including Princeton University, Harvard University, Cambridge University, Columbia University, Peking University, Oxford University, and the University of British Columbia. To carry the legacy of this two cent of Buddhism, the Venerable Ying Sun and Dharma Master Zheng Yan would take the first step with the start of this lecture series. Thank you for all the support from Ms. Vicky Baker and Carol Lee from UBC, Ms. Lona from Harvard Camp Lab, and the staff of Dai TV station, and all the staff of Tsuji Foundation, and many others who helped to make this event happen. May the Yingzhen Distinguished Lecture Series on Buddhism have great success for the years to come. As Winston Churchill has said, it's not the beginning or the end. It's the end of just beginning. We look forward to great success of this lecture series. Thank you so much. And hold on, we have to take a picture together. We keep the, our best memory, okay? Everybody open your camera. We are now to recall and take a picture all together. Thank you all. We listen to the director to get us. Shake your hand. Okay. And thank you, announce the uh, uh, closing of this ceremony is greatly success. Thank you all. Good night, good morning, and good afternoon. See you soon in September 20th from Cambridge University. Thank you.